I'm without speech notes. <laughs> I am a sort of a semi-retired professor, so I'm not quite without words. <laughs> I've taught and lived and, and uh, worked in this city for a long time. And I've greatly enjoyed it. It's a lovely place. Most days, it's a lovely climate. <laughs> some lovely friends, and it's a lovely environment to do new things. As, as a university person, that's what you aim to do, but you often aim to do it with the young of the world. And that's been a great pleasure. This time it's a great pleasure to have my wife up, but in the previous... <laughs> in the previous... Uh, awards that we've received with Mars Bioimaging this evening. I brought up some of our PhD students and ex-PhD students and some of our uh, business assistants, uh, marketing people within the company. And one of the interesting things about that is that quite a large number, quite a large fraction of our staff, our research students and moving on into staff in the company, have been foreign students. Um, and it's, it's one of the great things about Christchurch, I think, is how uh, international we are in spite of the fact that we're so far from the rest of the world. I'm not sure how long you've got me tonight. I suppose it's a usual 50-minute lecture. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say just one or two words on that theme of how important it is to continue and to grow Canterbury as a place of innovation. And some of that is to do with those PhD students and, and the younger students in, in, in the university system, well, the three universities in Christchurch, uh, Otago, uh, the, the big medical school here, um, Lincoln with its big agricultural college, and, and Canterbury with uh, quite a few other things. But one of the things I've been involved with for quite a lot of my uh, adult life is in education. How do you teach a uh, certain amount of high school kids? My wife's done a lot of the high school area, but a quite a lot of how do you get adults, young adults particularly, but in many cases quite, you know, the 50-year-olds who come back for a degree or whatever, how do you inspire them to learn more, to keep learning? And some almost 30 years ago, actually it's 30 years ago, about next month, uh, we started uh, a team of us to e grow something for the education of the public and, and of course the children and, and the tourists to Canterbury. And that's Science Alive. And if you're a Canterbury person, you know that we were there in Morehouse Avenue. We've got a little bit of, that, that building was very badly damaged in the quakes and had to come down. And so what does a group of us do? We have to do something similar. Well, we buy, instead of the old railway station, we buy the old law courts. In a few months, we're gonna have a lovely place right in the center of the city, facing Victoria Square. We call our building Victoria Quarter when we get the law courts out of it and we're going to open a Science Alive there. And that Science Alive is going to be for the tourists of Canterbury, for the young people of Canterbury, for the middle-aged, uh, the grey-haired, the, the grey nomads like myself, the people who enjoy travelling and learning as they go. And I'm hoping that quite a number of you will join us in that effort of creating one of the top attractions of the world certainly well up there with some of the other winners of tonight. Uh, quite a lot of the, the, the awards tonight, I, I can't remember them all at this stage, but the, 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 the willow banks that teach New Zealand si science, the biological science to, to, uh, to tourists and to locals, um, the museum of course, the, the, and other places like that. So we're gonna do that and you're gonna help me do it. Congratulations.